This is concept two, and we're going to be talking through patterns of evolution. And this is going to be for both CP and honors. It's going to be the same. So when we look at evolution and we observe it in nature, we basically see seven broad patterns. We see speciation, extinction, and these two are kind of opposite each other. Um, we see gradualism and punctuated equilibrium, and these two are kind of opposite of each other also. We see adaptive radiation, or it can be referred to as divergent evolution and convergent evolution, and these are opposite also. And then coevolution, which isn't opposite of anything. So we're going to talk through each of these seven. So first is speciation. This is the forming of a new species by evolution from a pre-existing species. So gene pools gradually become different, and they become so different that the organisms are no longer able to reproduce. At this point, we would say the two groups are different species. So I want to clarify, because this is a common evolution misconception. We're not saying that this brown squirrel evolves into being a gray squirrel. Um, what we're saying is that maybe there's a forest and there's a population of a hundred of these brown squirrels and 50 get isolated in one end of the forest and 50 get isolated in a different end of the forest. And let's say in one end of the forest with the 50, you know, someone comes in, some company, and they burn down the trees and there's all these gray ashes and then the, the brown squirrels there that had a little bit more gray variations start to be favored and over time, they become to favor in one side of the forest more gray squirrels and eventually they became so different we could have two completely different species. That's what we're talking about happening here with speciation. So we're forming a new species. All right, extinction is the exact opposite. This is the elimination of a species and it can be gradual or mass. So gradual extinction would occur at a slow rate um, it's usually due to a slow, gradual change in climate or maybe a series of natural disasters. Any species that goes through um, being endangered um, is in the process of gradual extinction. Whereas a mass extinction occurs when a catastrophic event changes the environment very suddenly and a lot, the entire species gets wiped out at once. This could be a massive volcano eruption or volcanic eruption, excuse me, um, a meteor hitting the earth. It could be, um, you know, an ice age type situation, that kind of thing. All right, gradualism is simply slow changes over a long period of time. So it's usually um, caused by slow environmental changes over time. So this picture is of a peppered moth. This is a common example we see in evolution because pre-industrial revolution in Europe, moths were always varying in color variation in terms of how dark they were, but the lighter colored moths were favored because trees were lighter colored. Over time, though, through the industrial revolution with all of the um, environmental pollution, the trees started to darken in color. And with that, natural selection started to favor the moths that had the darker colorations. And then over time, it gradually evolved to all, most, the majority of moths had this darker coloration. That's an example of gradualism. Punctuated equilibrium is kind of the opposite. It is bursts of change, these bursts of evolutionary change, followed by periods of um, relative stability. Um, I have this picture of these hippos because it is believed that the evolution of um, different land mammals as well as mammals that live in water um, occurred in bursts of change after um, the existence of dinosaurs and then the different catastrophic events that could have caused the extinction of them and the evolution of these land animals. Um, so that's kind of why that picture is here. So different than gradual, it's caused by bursts of change. Adaptive radiation is also known as divergent evolution. And this is when a number of different species arise from one common ancestor. And they usually diverge because new, they live in new environments or different environments and that they have to evolve to in order to survive in. So for instance, this is a picture of a bear. We've got a gorilla, an elephant, a koala bear. 
All of these are mammals, and they're all to believe to have evolved from some ancestral mammal millions of years ago. But because they all live in unique environments, they evolved to um, live in those environments and thus became so different that they became different species. Convergent evolution is the opposite. This is when unrelated species evolve similar characteristics because they live in similar environments. So for instance, um, this bird, this, I think that's an osprey I put a picture in, this bat and this pterodactyl, all of them have wings because they all live in the sky. They have a similar environment. They all fly, but none of them are actually related evolutionarily. Um, ospreys evolve from ancestral birds, bats are evolved from an ancestral mammal, and pterodactyls are connected to ancestral reptiles. So that's when we say convergent, they've come together because of similar environments, they have similar traits, but they're actually not related to the opposite of divergent. And then last but not least, super short notes, I know it's a relief after concept one was a doozy, but the last pattern is coevolution. And remember, co means together. The prefix means together. So these are when two organisms kind of evolve together. Um, they change in response to one another um, and form a specialized relationship. Many insects and flowers have evolved um, together because um, they work so closely together. Um, a lot of predator and prey evolved together too. And I don't want to give you too many examples because we're going to watch a really cool video and do some lab stations about this. But Really cool how animals have changed in response to each other over time.